back dear children this is the part 2 video from the chapter life processes and in this video we will be dealing with autotropic nutrition in our last video we dealt with the introduction part from the chapter life processes and here we will be dealing with the autotropic nutrition as a whole okay so coming to the topic carbon and energy requirement of autotropic organism are fulfilled by photosynthesis okay so what are autotropic organism autotropic organism are those organism that can make their own food by the process called photosynthesis okay and what is carbon out here carbon refers to glucose requirement and energy refers to ATP requirement okay they fulfill their carbon and energy requirement by the process of photosynthesis but we fulfill our carbon and energy requirement by taking up the plant products okay after photosynthesis glucose is produced and excess of glucose is stored as starch okay after the process of photosynthesis what is produced glucose is produced right and the plant they do not use all glucose at once all right and the excess of glucose is stored in the form of starch okay what is the energy reserve in the plant then the answer is starch okay but we store excess of glucose as glycogen so what is the energy reserve in humans that is glycogen okay most of the animal they store the excess of glucose in the form of glycogen but the plant they store excess of glucose in the form of starch okay now coming to the process of photosynthesis which is the basic and foremost of the autotropic nutrition we have been studying the process of photosynthesis since very childhood right but now we'll be getting the actual step of the photosynthesis and we'll be understanding the photosynthesis very deeply okay so concentrate out here there are three step of the photosynthesis okay first step is absorption of light energy by chlorophyll first thing is what is the chlorophyll used for chlorophyll is used to absorb the light energy the green color pigment that is chlorophyll in plant is helping plant to absorb the light energy that is the reason why only the green color plant they can perform photosynthesis because if there is no green pigment then there is no absorption of light okay that means the first step of photosynthesis cannot cannot happen right now the next step is conversion of light energy to chemical energy after the chlorophyll they absorb the light energy that light is converted to chemical energy and that chemical energy is utilized in splitting of water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen now the leaf of the plant they have chlorophyll they have water also how they have water because the plant absorb water from the root and bring it till the tip and hence the all leaf also get water right that means there is water in leaf there is chlorophyll in leaf then what else plant require plant require light for photosynthesis light also it is having isn't it because our chlorophyll has already absorbed the light so the so the three requirement for the photosynthesis is fulfilled now we have water we have chlorophyll we have light isn't it and for these two step only this three thing is required co2 is still pending okay so water molecule in the presence of chemical energy is splitted into hydrogen and oxygen and there is the reduction of co2 to carbohydrate how because you see co2 is added with the hydrogen from here and you see there is the reduction why there is reduction because if there is addition of hydrogen in any reaction that means that particular molecule where the hydrogen is getting added is getting reduced okay and the type of reaction is known as reduction reaction okay so the reduction of co2 to carbohydrate happens at the last step and the overall this is the overall step of the photosynthesis 6 co2 plus 12 s2o in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll is giving us glucose plus oxygen plus water now, the step of photosynthesis did not take place at the same time right i told you this process it can take place during the daytime and this process can halt and wait for the night okay it is not necessary that these all step take place one after another these two steps can take place during the daytime in the presence of sunlight 
and this step take place during the night in the absence of sunlight okay I means some plant only absorbs light energy during daytime during night they opens the stomata to uptake co2 for reduction into glucose okay now you see what happens during the daytime the plant they just absorb the light energy and split the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen and during the night it opens up their stomata and intake the carbon dioxide and that carbon dioxide will react with hydrogen and then there is the production of glucose okay In, this is mainly done by desert plant to avoid water loss by transpiration during the day okay why is there a gap between the step of the photosynthesis right because during the daytime when the stomata is wide open then what happens is from the stomata opening the excess of water can be lost from the plant in the process known as transpiration okay so to avoid the water loss what plant does is they opens the stomata during the night time so that there is no loss of water also and they can intake the co2 also and they can make the food also okay so the part of the leaf that contain chlorophyll is known as chloroplast okay the part of the leaf that contain the green pigment chlorophyll is known as chloroplast this has been studied in class 9 so let us recap the process of photosynthesis one more time okay first step there is the absorption of light energy by chlorophyll in the next step the conversion of light energy to chemical energy happens and that chemical energy is utilized to split the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen in the third step what happens is these hydrogen will combine with co2 and there will be the reduction of carbon dioxide into carbohydrate and this is the overall step of photosynthesis that is 6 o2 plus 12 h2o will give one molecule of glucose or uh, six molecule of oxygen and six molecule of water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll now the step of photosynthesis need not take place at the same time for the plant which lives in the area where there are excess of water they can uptake the co2 during the daytime also all right now during the night what happens is during night they opens the stomata to uptake co2 for reduction into glucose this is mainly done by desert plant to avoid water loss by transpiration during the daytime this i hope you are clear with the step of photosynthesis and what actually happens during photosynthesis and if you are asked does the step of photosynthesis occur one after another you will say it is no it is not necessary that the step of photosynthesis occurs one after another because some plants such as desert plant they tend to open their stomata during the night to intake the co2 in order to avoid the water loss by transpiration pool all right you can also be asked the question like why is there reduction of co2 there is reduction of co2 because hydrogen molecule is added to the co2 because of which there is reduction okay, so that's all for now and in the next video we will be dealing with the stomata and we'll also be dealing with the section of leaf all right till then stay tuned keep safe keep learning please do not forget to subscribe my channel and hit the like button thank you